Yep, you saw me. There you go, guys. That's fish. There you go, guys. That's unreal! Oh, this is such an awesome looking fish. Oh, yeah! Alright, guys, check that out. <laughs> Mink. <laughs> oh man, you are just barely big enough for that hook. <laughs> oh, hope you didn't hurt yourself. <laughs> oh, uh -oh. <laughs> come on, you can do it. You can do it. You did it. What's up, everyone? Scott the Trihammer here. Yes, I'm back. Pretty much did exactly what I wanted to do, and it was really good for the heart. Just taking a week off, just fishing just for me, not filming anything. Had a really good week. Had a had one really good uh, panfish trip where I caught some pretty big shell crackers. I didn't I didn't uh, take any pictures of those, but here's some of the bass I caught on the last bass trip I went on. And of course it seemed like I didn't bring the camera and that's when I started catching the fish. So it's before work, so you know me, I love pan fishing before work, especially you know with this job, being able to come fish in the afternoon. And what I've done is I've found some pretty late spawning bluegill and sunfish. By late spawning, I can't emphasize that enough. It's August 1st and these guys are just now spawning, they're on some beds. So pretty much what I've been doing, I took one of those impulse worms from Northland Tackle and just wacky rigged it on a small size eight mosquito hook. And I've just been sort of letting that fall slowly and naturally wacky rigged gonna lay into these fish a little bit more but first I'm gonna ask you guys please subscribe to the channel I'm trying to get this channel to grow to a thousand subscribers and I need your help to do that so if you could please hit the subscribe button down there notify bell up there so you're gonna be the first to see all the great content that's gonna come from this channel and I've been giving shout outs to people who subscribe to the channel between uploads and you know not making a video for a week saw my biggest increase ever saw like 20 subscribers in a week thank you guys so much for that Gonna do something pretty special once I hit 500 subscribers, but got some shout outs to give. Got shout outs for Nick Corison, DTW, X Dog, Muhammad Taha, Kev, The Cannibal Crew, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Fiar Sin. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to the channel. Seriously means the world to me, and that's how this channel is gonna grow. That's how you guys are gonna help me, you know, spread, spread the fishing love to the world, which is something I wanna do, and you know, I can't do it without you guys, so thank you guys so much. And again, thank you to all the new subscribers who had their subscription settings to private. You guys know who you are. You guys are rock stars. So I'll show you guys here in a few minutes, probably at the end of the video, why I'm fishing the creek today. And believe it or not, this time it's not because the lake's busy. The lake actually isn't busy. It's other reasons, and you'll see. And yes, I am still married. I just haven't been wearing my ring for a couple weeks because... Among my many stupid, pointless allergies, I'm allergic to nickel. And even though my ring is tungsten, still has a bunch of nickel in it. And I've been having a reaction to it on my finger, so I've just been not wearing it for a couple weeks, putting some cream on it, trying to get that, trying to get that uh, rash to clear. Almost has. That's why you guys don't see me wear jewelry. In fact, I just recently found a nickel-free belt <laughs> that I've been needing for a while. We got a couple in here. Oh my gosh, that's a sunfish. Yeah, I want that fish. So I am actually working on a video where I'm going to teach you guys different casting techniques and this goes across all species of fish. A lot of these are bass fishing techniques but you can use them for panfish and other fishing as well. One of them is sort of like a flip using your rod as a pendulum so you can't really cast that lure real tiny even with an ultralight rod and even with two pound lines. So what you want to do, give yourself plenty of slack like I've got this rod tip up so okay. I. That fish actually jumped out of the water to get that. <coughs> I've got this rod tip up to about my height. So it's about six feet, three inches off the ground. And it's about another, yeah, about another five or six, yeah, maybe six inches from the ground to the water. So, you know, it's close to seven feet of line right there. And what you do is you grab this part of your line, you bring that up and you swing it out and you sort of pendulum your line. That gives you some distance on a cast without actually having to cast it. <laughs> I wanted the sunfish, I got the sunfish, yeah! And that is a tank of a red ear. And you're peeing on me. Don't pee on my shirt though. Holy cow, now that's a sunfish. You got the red and the white in the tail, that red, that red spot right behind the gill, that tells you it's a red ear sunfish. 
<laughs> that's the tank I saw, that's the tank I wanted. Got the tank. Oh, a couple of bass just cruised in here. <laughs> it's a, uh, oh, it's a bluegill. Bye. Yeah, this might be the most effective method for catching panfish. You guys have seen me plenty of times in other videos show you what I call the, the fish every cast method where you just take a little crappie nibble, you put it on a hook and you just let it fall slowly and naturally. You really do that with any plastic, you know, around this size, and especially with the, uh, the impulse worm from Northland Tackle with that impulse scent they put in it. This is probably just the most natural presentation to give a panfish. You know, it's all, we're under some trees or, you know, anywhere you're near some bushes like here, let's go over here. Cause panfish are gonna huddle up right under these bushes in the shade and they're just gonna wait for forage to fall down from those bushes. Oh man, like, wow, there's like 20 down there. See, they all just come flying for it and it turns into a feeding frenzy. It just looks like a little worm, a little grub, something that fell out of the tree and they're just sitting there waiting for it. Oh, cute tiny bluegill. But the biggest thing you need with fishing this way is you need that, that slow, natural fall. Just let it fall slowly on its own because that's, that's the way, you know, little bugs and little worms like that fall through the water anyway. Now, crappie and sunfish are a lot more aggressive. A panfish, they're a lot more willing to chase, but bluegill and red ears, things like that, something about that slow fall just absolutely triggers them. Yes, I can't snap with my left hand. That's one big crawdad down there. <laughs> so, if you guys could see what was going on down there, what I was doing intentionally was, hold on, I need the pliers for this guy. Could not ask for a better hook set right in the roof of the mouth. Yeah, a red ear big enough to lip hook and get some pliers in its mouth. So what I was doing intentionally on that cast, if you guys could see, you guys could probably see the way that yellow worm was kind of bouncing around the water. The small ones were hitting it and weren't hooking. I wasn't trying to set the hook. Then a bigger one would come up and hit it and I wouldn't set the hook. And then the biggest one came up and hit it. That's when I set the hook. That's really one of the best ways you can catch the biggest fish is because, you know, if you catch one fish, stick there. Stick to that spot and just, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Have a good day fishing. But when you do something like that, like I've said plenty of times in other videos, is really all you got to do, you got to trigger one fish to strike. You trigger that one fish to strike, the whole school is going to fire up. And the smaller fish are the ones that are going to try to get to it first because the bigger fish usually eat first. But those smaller fish go for it, then a bigger fish says, okay, here's my opportunity. Then eventually the biggest fish is going to do that. Not just for pan fishing, but I mean bass fishing, trout fishing. That's going to work across all species. Fire up the whole school and just sit there and wait for the big one. Oh, the bass are back. And the bass took off. This method also, it's a real finesse presentation, so you don't really have to force a lot of action into the worm. All you want to do is let it fall slowly and naturally. And, you know, that's how you're going to get those finicky fish. They don't want to see that thing move. If you notice when I actually go to, when I uh, twitch it in front of a fish, that's when they back off. See, here's one right here on a bed. Where did you come from? I did not see you down there. Try to get that bedding sunfish. Nope. <laughs> All the smaller males are going to come out and hit it. Yeah, it's on your bed. Don't you feel threatened? Come on, there you go. Half a second too late. Let it fall all the way down on her bed. When I went to, s and she came up and put it in her mouth, and I set the hook half a second too late. <laughs> wow. Smaller one managed to swallow it. I mean, look at that. That is a big meal for a fish that big. And I didn't have to set the hook. The thing swallowed it. It set itself. Only reason I started reeling in was I saw my worm was completely gone. <laughs> There's that big one. Chunk. Holy cow. You know, it's not the biggest red ear I've ever caught, but, but it might be the fattest. Look at that thing. <laughs> you were watching it. You were thinking why I waited. 
Okay, because I know people are going to ask me to switch to a different lure, I'm going to switch to a different lure. But that's actually the biggest thing I wanted to teach on this episode was, you know, how to how to catch an entire school of panfish, whether that be like uh, bluegill or red ears or sunfish, anything like that. You know, this this really is probably the most effective way, other than what I've done before, just, you know, take off the worm, put a couple of crappie nibbles on that hook and do the same thing. This is an artificial method. So also, when you use things like this, like this uh, Northland Tackle Impulse Worm, these things have this proprietary scent blend baked into them. So I don't want to mix that with my other plastic, so I keep these things in the bag they came in. And then just keep the bag in my tackle box. I'm not trying to make this a Northland Tackle Impulse episode, but I want to fish one of these again. Especially since some of the fish I saw down here might react to a moving bait or maybe not these might seriously all be bedding fish they don't want something that moves well someone had the right idea ned rigging for bass just had the wrong idea leaving it laying around for a trout hammer to pick it up so hey free jig head but this is what i wanted to show this is atrocious this is the worst i've ever seen this lake so it's august 1st you guys have seen me make videos fish this you know lake pretty much all last year and last year was real typical to how this lake is but right now this is ugly this is butt ugly it's like i'm fishing the jolly green giants toilet never seen this much dead grass never seen this late of and this thick of an algae bloom i can see one fish i can see two fish around here normally there's fish just stacked there i mean it's crazy and I just ran into Nick, who I just gave a shout out for on this channel. He was on his way out, I gotta get out of here too. But for demonstration purposes, let's fish this jig head over here, see what happens. That darker colored presentation is definitely gonna work better in this dirty water. Also the moving bait might help, but I'm not too optimistic about fishing this. Yeah, this is probably just gonna end up being casting practice and cleaning the lake. Yeah, every cast I'm bringing grass up with it. Does not help. Well, even suspended, I can't get these fish to commit. That was a frog. That is a sick lake. And that is my cue to go home and get ready for work. So yeah, I know not only has it been a little while since I've done a fishing video, but it's been a long time since I've done an educational video like this. So that's what I want to do. Hope you guys learned something on you know how to target these real finicky fish that are going to be schooling up and places you're going to find them, presentations you want to lose to get them to strike. Just things like this don't help. Yeah, especially this time of year, you got to find that nice clean water, you know, look for places that have cover like this. And slow is better, less is more, just got to be patient. But let me know what you guys thought down in the comments below. And again, I'm trying to get this channel to grow to a thousand subscribers, and I need your help to do that. So if you could, please hit that subscribe button down there, notify bell up there, so you're going to be the first to see all the great content that's going to come from this channel. And like I said at the start of the video, I'm going to do something special when I hit 500 subscribers. I'm going to do another giveaway. This giveaway is going to be a little bit bigger than the last one because this is for 500 subscribers. It's the halfway mark. We're halfway there. Living on a prayer. That was awful. So yeah, if you guys want to help me do that, if you guys want to get a shout out on the channel, all you got to do is subscribe today. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, tips up, tight lines, and have fun fishing.